Yeah, yeah. So I just kind of, I was surprised I was right, yeah. <laughs> which I was. We can know they're all done. So just so everyone's aware, we are live on YouTube, and Chambers is unmuted. Okay. All right. Yeah, gotcha. I don't know why you're Oh, Amanda's live. Yeah, we're all live. She's on the computer. Oh, yeah, didn't let me call her? I was, again. Uh, I'm still working on it. I need another I can't say you guys. Oh, there's Chris. Okay. Is it both of them or just one? No, just the one for now. Okay, uh, according to the voice on the in the sky, we're, we are now currently live, so we'll start. Um, I'll start with roll call. I have Elaine, Andy. Mike is on the computer. Aileen is here. Heidi is coming, and we have Chris Peter. So we have a quorum. Okay, we'll start off with minutes to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, <clears throat> carried. <laughs> any opposed? Carried. Sorry. Um, I don't have any appointments for the night, so we will get right in. Uh, <laughs> in on one, uh, Denise Spingler, please. Good evening. Uh, you have my report. Just a couple of things I will highlight on the report. Um, our staffing, we are doing very, very well. We have retained three out of the four new trainees. Um, three are progressing very, very nicely. They're all really doing a good job. Um, one of them has recently started on fire training, one on Auburn Police, and one on County Law. As they complete the training on those positions, they'll transition to um, one of the others until probably about August time frame. Hopefully we'll have them trained in all three of the disciplines. Uh, we do have a resolution here for a backfill of one of the vacancies. Um, we have a list right now. I think there's only three members, three uh, candidates on that list right now. So, um, you know, we'll take a look at the candidates that are there. If, if any of them are viable, we'll, you know, hire. If not, there's a new test in February. And at that point, we'll, you know, wait for that new list to hire. Um, I'm going to go right ahead and take care of that resolution right now. Sure, yeah, it's JP2. Uh, All right, sorry, JP1. <laughs> JP1? I'll move it. Got a motion. Oh, I'll second. second. <laughs> okay. Hey. Second from Elaine, thank you. Um, any discussion on JP1? Yeah. Mark? Oh, just go ahead. It's a budgeted position. Did it it say that in the resolution? It's a budget. Okay. Oh, yeah. If I didn't put it in there, it's, I think it is. No, I think I didn't see it. I think it is, and it's from a resignation. Somebody resigned. Yeah. The position was funded. Okay. Yeah. It's funded. It's budget. All right. That's all. Uh, any other discussion? Check around here. Blink. Go ahead. 
question that I probably should understand. The million dollars that have been earmarked for the radios. Yep. Oh, can we hold off on that until we okay. finish the resolution? Oh, oh sorry. Ah, okay. So, um, any other discussion on JP1? None. All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Gary, now you may ask your question. The, the million dollars that was earmarked yep. made some original investments in communication at the sheriff's department. Right. They, they, yes, yeah. they have re, re, they purchased some new radios. And those that's already been, I guess, um, claimed for under ARPA. This million dollars will be used. <clears throat> Why? This is going to be countywide. Yeah, this is really, really earmarked for the volunteer fire departments. Okay. Um, we, when we have requested this funding through Ketco's office, we had letters um, of support from all of our volunteer departments because they were all. Um, given radios when the system first went live. Okay. So their radios are probably 12 years old now. Um, so there will be some that will will help with the sheriff's office. You know, I'm gonna, we're gonna kind of take a look at countywide what the needs are and kind of distribute based on that. And if we didn't get this, it would be up to the towns and villages to replace it? it yeah, we it would. Had to, it, that's it's correct. really a, a big gift to the towns. It really villages. is, it's huge, yes. This is, okay. yeah. And that will include the, the ambulance <laughs> services too? That will include the ambulance services too, yes. All right. Very good. So go ahead. So this can be included in a shared services plan. Um, I don't know if I can answer that because Lynn, that is on, maybe Lynn might be able to answer. And Lynn's in her office. I don't know if she's signed on. Yeah, I'm, I'm listening. Um, it, it wouldn't be a shared services plan because this is just revenue that we're going to spend. We're not going to spend them above the amount of the word that we got. There's no cost savings to it because it's money we're going to get for this purpose. Right. It's not, there's no, there's no cost. I mean, there really yes. is no local yes. cost because it is going to be a fully funded thing when we spend the money. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other questions for Denise? The only other thing I want to highlight is I just um, sent out an annual mm -hmm. report. I just, we posted it on our website. Um, and I think it might have put it in the Dropbox for the ledge. I, I really just kind of Chairman? yeah i just i went through this and you did a lot of work on this and i appreciate it i think we all appreciate it. I, I, a lot of information on there i'm sure it took you a while so thank you. good report and i said i i, just I, I had that conversation trying to highlight kind of you know what went on over the past year <clears throat> publicly thank you for that uh the great report appreciate it thank you any other questions for denise 911 thank you denise. Yeah. Uh, next up would be assigned counsel, Mr. Lloyd Hoskins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You received my uh, monthly uh, December report. I did in that report uh, just a, a snapshot, some of the uh, highlights. I will provide the committee next month a comprehensive report on the number of cases assigned and the costs associated with those cases. Uh, so it was just a lot of a lot of data to put together in this sh short of time to put together for tonight's meeting. But uh, we do have just a snippet of some of the highlights of CAP, uh, as well as um, family court and criminal court. Um, I do have a couple other things I'd like to discuss tonight with the committee. Um, but if you don't mind, if we could address the resolute JP two. As far as I'm concerned, we have uh, JP2. Yes. A year ago, I stood here before you and um, I, I, and was uh, you uh, considered and approved uh, my position as a part-time position. I would like to continue another year. Um, we've got <clears throat> a lot of things going on and I'd like your consideration to, to stay on part-time for another year. Sure, Chad, I really want to get rid of you that bad. Yeah. <laughs> My question. She wants me out of the house. <laughs> All right. Um, that's what we have. I will, if I can get a motion to second. discussion. I have a motion and a second. Now we'll go to discussion uh, for JP2. Did you have? I didn't. Oh, I thought you had a question. Go ahead, Heidi. So, Lloyd, um, part time is 20 hours weekly. 17, 17 something. We did go over that initially this year because I did not have attorney price on board, but uh, we should be able to keep within those parameters. Yeah, 
Is Any? this the same compensation rate that you were working last year? Yes. Okay. Any other questions about JP2? Oh, I'm going to bring him up okay, next. Good. I'm like, oh. <laughs> okay, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Very. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'd like to, Mr. Price is our supervising attorney. We've been working on a number of, pro of projects and um, he's going to present like an overview of uh, a project that we've been working on pre-COVID. So, John. Evening, everyone. Um, yes, uh, one project we've been working on, as uh, Lloyd indicated, he's been working on for probably about three years at this point, uh, and we've really sped up in the last few months is uh, looking for uh, an online vouchering and case management system for our office and for our attorneys. Uh, currently, for the past however many years, as long as there's been the sign council program, all the attorneys have been submitting their, their vouchers, their bills. Uh, it's all been pen and paper going through our office. So we're totaling just about 90,000 a month. Right now. Um, it's all being done, and you know, our, our secretary Diane's punching calculator <coughs> paper every single month at that amount. Um, I think ultimately, you know, an online system is an inevitability. We spoke to a number of other counties who have all transitioned to, to that at this point. So we spent the last couple of years, we've talked to a number of different software providers. Um, over the case of the past year or so, I'd say we've really been down to three that we've had a number of consultations with. I think we've narrowed it down to, uh, we're looking at a company called IQ, it's owned by Reuters. Um, so they are you know, owned by the same company that provides us with, provides our panel with Westlaw. Um, and you know, we've spoken to some counties. Um, we had a rather lengthy conversation with Broome County, who used their product and was quite satisfied with us. Um, but to, to cut to the chase, financially, um, this should be this has already been considered for our budget, um, and, and ultimately would be reimbursed by ILS. Um, but we're looking at a three a minimum three year contract. Um, there would be some upfront costs associated with that, so installation and, and training that would uh, total somewhere around seven thousand. And the first year, they'd be looking at a little shy of three thousand a month. Um, there'd be a three percent increase year by year. In total, for three years, we're looking at um, one hundred twelve thousand six hundred five dollars, um, which once again has already been considered for our budget moving forward, would be reimbursed uh, by Indigent Legal Services. Uh, so we're just here today looking for kind of a, um, some sort of unofficial go ahead to, you know, really speak with them concerning a contract. Obviously, once a contract is drawn, we will present that to the county's attorney's office to review, but um, we're just here tonight to present that to you and get some type of feedback. Like Chris, so just to confirm, that, so it's in indigent legal services, correct? Yes. Um, they would reimburse one hundred percent. So the and again to confirm that one hundred twelve six hundred five dollars. Uh, that figure is correct, and yes, they would reimburse one hundred percent. Thank you. Will this have any type of savings in terms of the manpower that's being spent? Um, this particular function, if it's now softwareed and automated, I think it. Yeah, you know, I think it's going to save. Um, I think it's going to save time all around uh, mm -hmm. for people in our office for the attorneys working on, on things. Um, you know, it's, I mean, I don't know. I mean, we'd be cutting down on. I suppose we'd be cutting down on paper costs and stuff like that. But I think the really. I would say ignore Diane's time. If at some point she was ever to retire, now. She will or you will. Yeah. But I just wondered if there would be. Like, Jump on board with John for a second. The, you know, we're averaging 90000 a month. Uh, they come in a, a carbon uh, triple form. Uh, the attorneys sign off on it. The judges sign off on it. We sign off on it. 
goes through quite an audit process mm -hmm. and it's all manually done. Yes. And you can imagine $90,000 worth of invoices yes. coming in. Um, it's just gonna, I think, make things more accountable and more efficient. Um, so, it, it, you know, at some point in time, we're gonna have to go that way. And what a great opportunity the ILS has provided the funding for. It. We just kind of wanted to like give an overview. No, I, I'm not saying cut hours. I'm just saying it likely will automate oh, it and make it a lot more efficient. Absolutely. Chris, I believe you have a question. Yeah, I was just wondering, um, have there been any discussions with our IT director on this as he looked at it in terms of? Had um, very, I've had a very short conversation with uh, Mr. Bunn regarding um, the need to have a sit down and discuss that. Mainly, our, our main concern being importing um, the data that we already have from Microsoft Access, make sure it's compatible with this program. My understanding is it would be, um, but yeah, we have had talks about sitting down and checking out as well. I would just be interested because they're going to be the tech support when things probably don't go as smoothly as we want them to, uh, to make sure that they're comfortable with that um, new system as well. And we have a new finance director now. I don't know if there would be any um, interaction or um, transactions coming out of that office uh, related to this, but if so, it would be great to involve Grace in, in the conversation. Sure. Heidi, I think you your hand up. Yeah, um, you know, for a while, I know at least a couple of us have been interested in recidivism information. And so I'm, I, I'd like to make the assumption that this software could help bring that to our attention more easily, perhaps. I see, I see Lloyd yep. saying yes. Because here, here's something I'm curious about in the report. For instance, there's a year-end report for 22, and there's 798 criminal cases in, in the uh, city court and 249 in the towns and villages. So about 1,100 people, possibly. Maybe it's 700 people, you know, make, because of recidivism, you know, people who have, uh, who have used services maybe two, three times during the year. And I'm curious about all of this because um, it's important, I think, for us to know what our crime rate is. Do we live in a healthy and safe community? And these numbers are the kinds of numbers that people would look at to say, okay, there's 76,000 people in Cayuga County and 1,100 of them have offended, but maybe not if there's recidivism here. Maybe it's really three or 400 people. And so I really wanted to have that information, get be able to get that drilled down so that we can say, possibly, we live in a safe county that, you know, statistically, this is really the percentage of offenders. Right now, we really can't do that without breaking this out. So I'm hoping that the data will be able to, the software will be able to break that out easily for us so we can, we can actually present that. I mean, even on our website, what's the, what's the safety, what are the crime rates in Cuca County or et cetera. I think that, um, I think that very well may be a, a possibility. I don't think we've had the specific conversation um, with the software provider, but um, one thing about this is it's it's not a, um, even though there's a base model, it's not necessarily a prepackaged thing that we're getting. Part of those upfront costs involve development. Um, so this will be somewhat tailor-made to our county and what specifically we want out of it. So. You know, if that's a, an important element, I, I imagine that can be brought to their attention. Hey, Andy. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Andy. No, go ahead. Andy. This is only for people who are qualifying for indigent legal services, though. Right. Correct. I mean, right. it, it, yes. Right. So there's there would be more. Mm -hmm. You know, my my assumption is there do, we need to be input from the district attorney's office to really get a good the look at other than um, the picture uh, in our county. And hopefully be able to say this statistically is a safe county to live in. That's what we'd like to be able to know and say. Go ahead, Andy. So on the same subject here, Lloyd, you said you were going to give us a more in-depth report. Can you can you go back like 
with the numbers you've given, like maybe five years just to compare oh, yes. what it looks like. And then maybe you and Brittany can do something together to get a full picture like they're talking about. I mean, I could certainly, we could certainly go back five years with that data. Uh, I don't know what the DA's capabilities are, but certainly sit down and have that conversation with Just to see how it's trended over the last five years. Yes. Yep. Because hopefully, I mean, I, I don't know, it depends on how you want to look at it. If we have a high receivity rate, does that show great for the county? I mean, you know. <laughs> And you talked about us being a pilot county for some other data. Did you not that I make that up? No. <laughs> yep. okay. last, last month we were were pilot for, for two different uh one's through the University of Albany and one is through Texas Methodist University or University of Texas. Um their grad students are working on one project. And Albany is working on another project. Impact of bail reform and other initiatives Correct. is that, and at some point we'll get some of that feedback yes. as well. In fact, I would hope to have them, those folks, up to do a, a mini presentation. I'll give you real time if you want to. I'm going to get their information. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions for either of our folks from Sign Council? All right, thank you, thank you both. Sure. Mr. Chairman, just oh, yeah. one thing. Uh, we did meet uh, last month. We had talked about a meeting uh, in support of Nice Sex resolution. And Rich, do you want to update the committee or we're not ready yet? Or um, Not entirely ready, although okay. I did see something in the, this is in relation to um, the move to uh, enhance the assigned council rates for uh, defense council. Uh, it's currently at the rate of $75 an hour, um, which is below what most of us pay our plumbers, auto mechanics, and whatever. It hasn't been changed since 2004. So there's a movement in Albany to um, increase those rates. Um, there's been a, a lawsuit filed in New York City uh, and a judge ordered the, the rates there to be increased to $158 an hour, which is the rate paid in federal uh, court for criminal defense. Um, it has been filed in uh, New York State uh, by the State Bar Association asking for a similar increase to uh, defense counsel who operate uh, in upstate New York. Um, and NISAC had asked us as county attorneys uh, for input on whether they should join in that lawsuit uh, to seek the, uh, the increase. I saw a news feed today. One of the one of the issues in that discussion is whether the increase to assigned council rates should be paid for by the counties or by the state. And uh, apparently, the uh, NISAC has. I don't know if they have actually intervened in the lawsuit. Yet, but uh, they have uh, presented a white paper to uh, the legislature advocating for uh, the legislature to, you know, have the state pay for that increase. Um, it's still being debated uh, in the uh, budget process. Uh, our understanding is that the governor has put the uh, the potential increase in, or will put it in her proposed budget. Uh, the Assembly and Senate um, had, would like to also see the increase. The Senate and Assembly want to put the cost on the state. The governor in previous iterations of this last year um, wanted to have the counties take up the cost. So there's a dispute in Albany on whether it's going to win. Uh, as it stands right now, NISAC is advocating for the state to uh, one, increase the rates, and two, pick up the, the increase. So kind of where we are. With which we are the state, so you still will be paying for it. I'm glad I live in the country because my plumber and mechanic are less than 75 dollars an hour. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, if we do have to pick up that cost, do you have any idea? Within thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, how much it's going to cost us on an average? Do you have any idea, Lloyd? Um, 
Ms. Marinelli and I had that discussion when we proposed the budget. So we 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 did put uh, an amount in the for the increase, right? 2023 budget. So uh, hopefully we're covered if it does happen. Uh, it's hard to anticipate how much it would cost. Right. Okay, I figured it would. You, you really can't really double it because, um, you know, you would think going from what, some from 75 to 158, you would just double the budget, but it really doesn't work that way. And there's a different price for misdemeanors and felonies. Right now it's $60 for misdemeanors and 75 for felonies. Okay, thank you. And 75 for family court. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. So they want to double it to 158 for everything, or is there still a scale? I don't know if family court's involved, and I don't know what the misdemeanor rate is. Yeah, but we'd have to wait till the governor's budget comes out. Don't have all the details. I think it's still two tiered. I think it would be 120 and 150, something like that. Go ahead, Elaine. Didn't the budget include some kind of enhanced rate for complicated cases or? We did get funding for, in, in 2023, through ILS, for some of the complex cases. In family court or just in general? Both criminal and family so court. So they enhanced your reimbursement they so did. that, because people, there'll be a lot of legal services, the more complex the case, Absolutely. but the rate wouldn't change. But Correct. Okay. Yep. I knew I remembered that. All right. And I, I should note that uh, some individual attorneys are making... Uh, applications to the local criminal judges uh, asking for an enhanced rate uh, based on constitutional concerns and things of that nature. Um, and we suspect that that's going to increase. The frequency of those are going to increase less than until the state. Because you know, the judge has to approve the, the enhanced judge rate. Has to approve. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, John. Thanks, Mark. Go ahead, Layman. Chris. No, go ahead. I was just wondering if you could elaborate on the constitutional concerns Question. related to the rates. The, um, the argument is that the rates are so low, it is depriving defendants of uh, their right to a defense because attorneys are basically turning away from the signed counsel panel because they can certainly you know, make much more than that in, you know, private practice. So um, the, the concept is that because they're turning away, there's a shortage of defense attorneys. The attorneys who are doing the defense work are being overloaded with uh, cases and can't provide the, you know, the necessary resources to each individual, you know, defendant as, as they come through. So the argument is we're denying them their constitutional right to due process. Thank you. Interesting stretch. Okay. Kind of. Any other questions? Speak now or forever hold your peace. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Next up uh, would be the coroner, uh, Dr. Duckett. I don't believe he's on. I don't see him there. So we'll move on. Uh, in his report, it just said no, no changes are. Um, district attorneys. Chris Valdina. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think most people are aware Brent needs in the middle of a murder trial right now, so she has me to cover the meeting. In terms of updates, uh, I, I think everybody is aware that we're now fully staffed. Finally, I did. Yeah. Yeah. So we are fully staffed. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we, we did uh, receive a DCJS grant award uh, for our CARB program in the amount of $80,000 resolution to accept the funding will be forthcoming in February or March. I think there's just a couple steps we have to do with it, DC. Yes, and then we'll have that um, ready to go in terms of resolution. In terms of our resolution tonight, JP3, uh, we're asking the legislature to execute an approved 2022-2023 uh, criminal justice discovery reform funding plan award for the amount of two hundred seventy thousand seven hundred fourteen dollars i'll move it i have a motion can i get a second second i have a second uh any discussion move it video 
<laughs> Thanks, Mike. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Kerry. Thank you. Anything else, Chris? Yep, yep. Thank Thanks, you. Chris. Thanks, Chris. Please pass along. Uh, great job by everybody over in the office. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That went well. Uh, next up, uh, uh, fire and EMO, uh, Mr. Riley Shirtliff. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my report's in front of you, uh, similar to last month. Uh, I'm going to just try and touch on a couple of highlights. Every month that I'm here, we're getting just a little bit more excitement, a little more activity coming out of the office. Um, first off, I know it's a hot button issue going into this year the Public Safety Training Center or the Fire Tower. Um, we did have a chance to review some initial site plans. We discussed those last month. Following that, I was able to meet with a couple of my state fire instructors and go over set plans to best utilize and maximize the space and what was offered to us by Bergman and Associates. We made some modifications, some cost saving adjustments, including eliminating additional bathrooms, having two facilities versus four and we sent those back to Bergman. Um, they said, give them approximately 40 days to revise those, edit those changes in, and then respond back with some preferred plans, at which point we'll be able to discuss selection and then move into the cost estimate. Um, they will give a cost estimate once we know what we're looking at for more of a final design. That 40 day mark is still about eight days out from today. I did call them this morning just to say, where are things and they're still looking for that additional week's time before they can respond back to that information. Can I ask him a question? Absolutely. Um, just for my clarity, when you talk about these upgrades, are you talking about the fire tower, the training tower, or are you really talking about construction of the classrooms that have been unable to be used? The classroom and the site. Uh, I'm, I, I speak when I say the fire tower is uh -huh. just the site, the training facility. Okay. The whole. The tower I'm not itself. talking about the three-story tower, the okay. current building itself, no. Um, we're not making, adding bathrooms to a three-story. <laughs> no, but not <laughs> doing any upgrades to that or minimal? Not, not at this time. Um, okay, this is really meeting the needs of the classroom on the site. Classroom, site changes, vehicle storage for our existing trailer fleet, yep. be it um, our swift water trailer, our ATV trailer, trying to move those into housing to prevent further losses through deterioration of weather exposure. Yep. But I, I refer to 14 Quarry Road as the training tower for okay. the fire tower. I'm, our changes in our proposals are for the classroom and the facilities around it, not to the burn building. Yeah, because at one point there was a small amount of money they were looking for for the burn building, 30000 or something. But this is, this is the classroom. There is the ability within this plan as a whole to create basically what would be a burn pod. A burn pod is a separate, I think, of a connex um, type structure that's built onto the end that abuses the wear and tear of multiple live fire burns, charges that three story tower with smoke, but prevents the wear and tear of the heat damage from going onto the building itself. And those burn pods are removable and replaceable over time. So that way you're not battering the three story building, you're battering the pod. That is part of this overall plan. Pod, okay. And that is something that we can always discuss it a later date, yep. it's included. Um, but when I refer to the project as a whole, we're getting this classroom back online okay. and improving facility as much as the tower itself. Okay, thanks. More than happy to answer that. Um, going down on, we've had some updates and some changes with plans. The scene support or rehab vehicle that's in production, um, we are going to be looking at a cost adjustment for that. <coughs> for review. Uh, this is going to be for the installation of some shelving, some secure D-rings for equipment while in transport, as well as emergency lighting. Um, for whatever reason in translation, transition through the office, emergency lights were not included in the original proposal for this vehicle. We're looking at a total of just above $5,100 for these changes. Um, and if I can say anything on behalf of this uh, update for this increase in charges, anything that provides greater scene visibility and emergency lighting at an emergency scene can is widely appreciated. 
Um, in this country, we kill way too many people on roadsides, and this rehab unit can often be on the road or just in a driveway or a parking lot, barely off. And if we can do anything for increased visibility, adding some emergency lights at the cost of fifty, one hundred, and I believe ten dollars is something that I, I will definitely push for. Looking down through, uh, we do have a couple other highlights throughout. Um, your county coordinators are out and responding. I will also say that having driven the current rehab vehicle to a scene in the last week and a half, um, the you new one, one can't come soon enough. Uh, <laughs> what we have will do the job, but we could definitely be doing it better. Um, we did have a request for aid to the Buffalo area for their winter storm. We ended up not having anybody go from the county. We did have a number of departments respond willing and able. None were requested to go out. And then we constantly have trainings going on as well. Um, and that includes everything from basic firefighter level courses to water rescue. I mean, we had 19 bodies in the classroom in Moravia on Monday this week. So we're continuing to push for and advocate for trainings throughout the county. Um, and that's all I have on my report. Do you have any questions? Anybody got any questions for Riley? Hearing none, you get out easy. Thank Good you. job, Riley. Thank you, Riley. Thank you. Next up will be probation, Mr. J.D. West Belair. Good evening, everybody. The report uh, was sent forward. Just a couple of points. Uh, the alternatives to incarceration board, the next quarterly meeting has been scheduled. That will be January 25th at 2.30 p.m. in caucus room one. Um, a calendar event went out to everybody that's on the current distribution. <laughs> we'll review our membership at that meeting. We'll go over um, numbers from the, the uh, last quarter of 2022. Um, probably some updates as well by from the governor's office by then. Uh, in her address, she did touch on increased funding for ATI. So it'll be interesting to hear if there's anything further coming out that will tell us just how they may envision that funding being distributed and targeted. Staff vacancy, uh, we do have finally a replacement for our senior typist. Uh, it's an individual who's been a part-time county employee for quite a while. She's been looking for a full-time position. Um, because she's already internal within the county, she's gonna move over quicker and starts with us on Monday the 23rd. So that's exciting. Our um, account clerk typist position is still vacant and that's uh, subject to the resolution that I'll touch on momentarily. After I submitted my report, we had an issue with one of the department vehicles. We currently have two vehicles assigned to the department. <clears throat> uh, both were sheriff surplus vehicles. They're both over 10 years old. Uh, we had a minor fender bender that caused some damage to the driver door and fender. Um, it's going to cost us about $4,100 to repair. Our budgeted line for our vehicle expenses for the year is only $4,600. Uh, we need to see what we may do with insurance and with our copay. Um, but the long and the short of it is we need this vehicle on the road, and I may then have to come back to this body and request some funds from contingency. I'll update that next month. In the meantime, of course, the other vehicle that was on the road goes down. So we went from three at the beginning of 2022 to one to none in about a five day period of time. Um, one of them we surplused away based on the uh, advice from Motor Pool because it was really just falling apart on us. Um, that was our 2011 Durango. That has since been repaired, that's back on the road. So right now we have one serviceable vehicle, which for the most part serves our needs. We do still have a vehicle in the pipeline based on approved ARPA funding. Um, I'm not really sure where that is. I believe the order has been placed, but these vehicles are taking a really long time to come through. So, um, you know, hopefully that arrives sooner than later. Um, but just wanted to give you a little heads up on the possible need for additional funding due to the damage to one of our vehicles. So we have, again, a vacancy for an account clerk typist. Uh, this is a funded approved position. We filled it late last year. That individual did not stay in the position. They resigned. That led to the, the new vacancy. 
Uh, the problem here could potentially be there is a current list. We exhausted that list filling the last vacancy. Um, the individual that we hired was literally the last person available on that list. I would only anticipate that the people on that list we're gonna go through again will all likely decline again, which may leave us uh, in the position of having to advertise and hire provisionally. If we do, we do. Um, the position was tested for in October, but these tests are taking six to eight months to get results back to the county. So um, I am asking you to approve the position so I can begin the process of filling it and hopefully we can fill it in a timely manner. All right, that would be uh, JP4. Can I, I have a uh, question for him before we do oh, that? Though. Oh, okay. Just because it's not on the resolution. The car thing. Was that 4600 after our insurance? Worth of damage? Is that what you're doing? Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry if I wasn't clear. $4,600 is what we have budgeted for our vehicles for 2023. Okay. That's it. But the damage to damages the to the vehicle uh, based on the quote that I received from the body shop is $4,100. Is that after whatever our insurance pays or? No, no, that's just the straight quote. I, I have no idea what our insurance may pay. Okay. okay. We, we talked, I don't know when we talked about this before, but. The insurance money that comes into the county can't go back into the budget to reimburse. Oh, it would, yes. Oh, instead of. Yeah. Legal. I mean, the, what, what I need to find out at this point is do I just pay the 4100 bucks and get it fixed? And because I'm, I'm also not clear what our deductible is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at, at this point, I need to find out all, the, all yeah. of that. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, let's get back to JP4. The authorization to fill the uh, accountant clerk typist title in the probation department. Move it. I have a second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on JP4? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Next up would be the sheriff. The sheriff is unable to attend tonight. Um, uh, I spoke with him on the phone. He sends his regrets. He asked me if I would just uh, handle, he's got two resolutions tonight, so I will read them and we can proceed from there. <clears throat> JP5, uh, JP5 is a, it's a maintenance agreement budgeted for the sheriff's 2023 budget. Um, line number is A31504-54012, allows the chair and the sheriff to sign an agreement with Johnson controls for $9,586.61 for a period of 1, 1, 23 to through 12, 31, 23. And that's, I believe that's for their uh, fire alarm systems. Yeah. Move it. I have a motion. Second. I got a motion or a second. Uh, any discussions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, JP6, JP6, uh, funds have been budgeted in the 2023 Sheriff's Department uh, budget to accommodate a wage increase of $3 an hour to reflect the salary of $25 per hour for the security staff in this building. And yep. move it. Have a motion. I guess I have a second. Uh, any uh, discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Carrie, so that's it. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. I don't think there's any discussion. Thank you. Yep. Oh. Right away. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I figure give them a little bit of time to use the facilities or whatever, and then we'll hit it. What do you got exciting on yours? Nothing. Nothing.
to him. I'm not a lock fireman. I'm a fireman. No, I know that. Yeah, a like, you. No, I knew that. I got confused. Us young bucks will be. I mean, so there are Just thank you for the United States. <laughs> okay, just so everyone knows, Skinner's is unmuted. Yeah, well, they, you know, they had a big response. Oh, I saw the whole thing yesterday. I missed it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It was exciting for two minutes. And then they had to Let me work on a call now. Today, but they had a lot of Yeah, they were always bad because you got both sides. Apparently, somebody stormed out of here. Yeah, it's sad. You ready to go? Yeah, I'm thinking they want to get there. Oh, yeah, yeah, why? Well, I'm not involved in so much. I saw Brittany and uh, everybody walk out. Yeah, I'm I'm more holding down the floor. Oh, boy. Yeah, I know. We just have so many ladies. Everybody want to get rolling? Yeah, thank you. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you. See you later, buddy. Fuck, you're going to have to bang on the chairman. you got to borrow the chairman. I don't want to be rude. I'm trying to be a gentleman. You want me to smack this? Yeah, bang on the bang on, bang the gavel. Uh call a meeting to order. I do believe we have a quorum. Trish is here. <laughs> Heidi, uh, Hans, and Mr. Shea. Uh let's do minutes to prove, if you would, please. Second. Motion <laughs> second. Uh I bet there's no discussion. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. We have no appointments. Um, first up is uh, Board of Elections. Um, I was reminded of something that, uh, oh, Keith's here. <laughs> Welcome, Keith. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair. It's good to see you. I'm sure something reminded you of something. <laughs> it might have been your boot. I don't Thank know. Thank you. <laughs> But no, thanks a lot. The, as you all know, we did not send a report this month. We, of course, will in the future. The reason we didn't this month is both of us started January 2nd. The, um, and we really didn't have anything 
of, not of substance, but we didn't have anything of intelligence to share. <laughs> and our concern was, is it makes us look even more foolish than you already know we are. <laughs> so the, so this, we just, we're just getting settled in. I did want to come though. One of us will be here at every meeting, sometimes both of us, but the, uh, with or without a report in order to provide you all the opportunity to ask any questions you might have on fee and on anything. So beginning next month, of course, we will have a report, written report for you. So I'm just here to say that and to see if there are any questions. You guys are just gonna let them off that easy. There you go. Okay. Um, what kind of time frame are you expecting for the um, vacancy in the office? Uh, within the, uh, the uh, expect to make an offer this week. Oh, good news. The full-time person. Yes. Deputy, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Any further questions for the commissioner? All right, hearing none. I just wanted to add that I've talked to both Keith and John. Um, welcome them aboard. I'm happy to have them. They've got big shoes to fill. But uh, uh, seems like they're hitting the ground running from what little I know. So welcome, and um, we're happy to have you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that, Chris. Great. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Keith. Thanks. Have a good night. Uh, Sheila, Amanda on? Somebody. Who's the iPhone? I am on. I'm county legislature. <laughs> That's my. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, nothing to report. Uh, but we do have one resolution. I don't know if you want to take it now or. It, I'd like to. If So I'll entertain a motion for GO1, which is the pension reporting resolution for elected and appointed of officials. Move it. Okay. Okay. Sure. <laughs> All right, motion and second discussion on GO1. Turn in my paperwork now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the club. Uh, there. So, <laughs> so we'll stop discussion on that. And say, oh, <laughs> Aye. Aye. Opposed, carried. Aye. Oh, sorry. I have one opposed, Mr. Petcher. Yes. Still because it doesn't make any sense. Fair enough. <laughs> um, all right. So, and I assume there's nothing else, Amanda? Nothing else. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. All right. So, county attorney, uh, Fred's going to handle that. I think there's also a couple of updates that you're going to open for us. Yes, just a couple of updates. Uh, as a reminder, there are, there are two public hearings at the end of the month. One on the local law to create the Department of Purchasing the second on the local law to increase the salaries for the elected and appointed for a term. Uh, that's at 3%. So just wanted to keep that on your radar as it comes forward. Uh, the maybe some amendments coming to the rules of order, uh, maybe some minor adjustments. The, there was just a local law passed to have video conferencing. There's been some discussion in the office to maybe attach that to the rules of order as well. Uh, to reference in the fact that the chair is the budget officer um, to talk about uh, a couple other uh, minor issues. So that might be coming in the future. Uh, remember your rules of order have a whole section or two on the um, uh, officers here and the weighted votes. That's all going to sunset at the end of this year. And then the next group will probably want to address how that's going to look and any other changes to the rules of order for next year. Um, <clears throat> there is a, do you want me to jump into the attendance thing? Yeah, yeah I, I, that, right. That. I mean, taken out of order at the end of the agenda um, is the county policy on attendance for department heads. Remember that the video conferencing local law only applies to legislators in extraordinary circumstances. So the question becomes, do you want to permit <clears throat> department heads? Do you want to see them here in present in present in the room? Or is it okay if they participate by as some of them do on a regular basis? So I'm going to put that out there for you to consider, not looking for any action tonight, but just to put it on your radar. There have been a couple of questions that have come up, and the answer kind of is, well, I don't know. The policy says have to be present are they present when they're on electronically this body will have to decide that question 
thank you for being so expeditious. Uh, you know, we try. Um, any questions? Um, the public hearing on the purchasing department. Yes. I was wondering, um, I remember when this resolution came before us, there was no context or background information on it, no presentation or discussion, really. And I was wondering if there was somebody that could speak to this in terms of um, just in general, like what, what is the plan and why why now, why a separate purchasing department, um, where, where it emerged from, just, just some background information on it, not just for us, but for the public who were asking to comment on it. Okay. Um, where, where is it coming from and what does it look like? What's changing from what we had prior to what we're trying to move forward? I can give you a little background, but with that, I'll make sure that somebody is prepared to talk about it in more detail uh, at the end of the month. Great. Uh, the purchasing agent, if I can use, that's not the correct title, but the purchasing agent reported <laughs> to the administrator. There is no longer an administrator function. so. The department, somebody, he has to report, he or she has to report to somebody. It's on the, the executive side of the government, not the legislative side. So the, the purpose of appointing, creating a department is to have that person on the executive side and report up through that. Um, so, and, and the, the appointment is also going to be another concern because of the Local law talked about the appointment by the administrator. That doesn't exist. This body would do the appointment of the, like any other department head would do the appointment. So essentially reporting directly to the chair or? No, that uh, would report directly to the legislature. Directly to the legislature. As opposed to say the administrator. If the, if the legislature just filled that position, there's a gap, if you will, as to who she or he reports to because that reporting structure is gone at this stage, either because we don't have the person or the local law was repealed. But in either case, there is nobody there. So there's nobody to report to. And I guess just commenting on that, we just we just appointed a finance director. Um, and how does this position, does this position, has, has there been any consideration of putting this position within our finance department um, or any discussion around that? There has been. Uh, the functions need to be separate because you can't write the checks and pay the bills at the same time, so to speak. There has to be a separation of duties. That's accomplished by having separate departments. So it has to be a separate department? It has to be separate, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, you can. All right, yeah, go ahead. What's the difference between we just brought in a youth bureau director? We didn't create a department of youth bureau. We we appointed a youth bureau director that reports to the county legislature through the HHS committee. The, the issue of creating a whole department of one, it, that's where I think maybe we're all getting lost. What I don't know is the history of the creation of the youth bureau. Mm -hmm. um, it may have been, and I'm guessing, because I haven't done the research, it may have been that once upon a time it was created as a, a department, as a department bureau. Uh, yes, yeah. I mean, the closest I could get to is weights and measures, mm -hmm. but I don't know if that's required by New York State law. But think about weights and measures. That's the same way. This body has never created that position, but it exists. Or weight or department, I guess. Right. Or, or think of the finance department that didn't exist three years ago. The legislature created that for whatever reason. Uh, that has happened to a number of departments. And through time, uh, the health and human services was a combination of health, mental health, and or uh, DSS. So those things can be done by the legislature. So I know I've gone off on a tangent, but. But this is a department of one at this particular time. Yes. Like There's the language in there that there could be staff added, but at this point, it's a department of one. That's correct. And the youth bureau is a department of one, if you will. Uh, weights and measures is a, is a department of one. Yes, ma'am. Um, Mr. Chair, this conversation reminds me that we need to you took the establish a off. committee to examine form of government. This is the committee. And um, we need to then establish meetings and see this on our agenda. Uh, I concur. Or have have um, at ad, ad hoc committee. 
I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, and that's what I was just going to say. You stole my thunder a little bit. Um, I do find it uh, vexing, especially since my time here is meaning. Um, I hope that we do take that up uh, as illustrated by this point and several others um, that I hope that we do address that form of government. I know I've been beating that drum for since I got here, but uh, I'll continue for the remainder of my time to champion that cause. So any other, yeah. So I find it vexing. <laughs> you are the chair of this committee. At any time you can direct this conversation to be had. I bring it up all the time. And I, you know, you and I've had quite a bit of conversations as well. We have action. About, well, I've asked you, you know, we've had conversations on the phone, several of them. We can, you know, how do you want to proceed? We can have that conversation. The sky's the limit. Anything you want to do, we can have that conversation. We can set up, again, I, I've discussed this with you, you know, we can set up a committee. We can run it through government ops. I'm happy to do whatever, but I, I cannot, you know, I'm not, what I won't do is mandate by fiat. So I'm happy to, to be participating in the formulation of that government, but I need I need all of you. I can't just do that. So again, I agree and happy to do that um, whenever. I, I think we I all as individuals have voting power so that when these things are presented to us and they're not maybe in a situation that we like all nice and bundled in a package, we ask these questions, we point out the fallacies in the way it's being presented, and then we vote accordingly. And if everybody votes no because it wasn't presented correctly, maybe that forces somebody to go back, do it the right way, present it to us in a manner where we can either accept it or educatedly, if that's a word, say yes. But I think that if I if somebody were to hold a gun to my head and say, hey, should we uh, start a whole new department today? My answer is no, because my constituents say, stop growing the freaking government. We're all leaving. Why are you growing the government? So I, I agree that something is not working right here. And if we can't do it in a committee format, let's do it as individuals and represent our constituents. You know, I guess that's, uh, I, I, I personally, I don't think that's the path to, you know, I, I think, but that's certainly an option to bring forth the legislation. Way. I personally would like to partner, you know, absolutely, and, and, and bring something forward that we can, well, we're not all going to agree on anything, but right. certainly we, we can all, well, really? we don't. a majority, 51%. How about a plurality? <laughs> uh, I'll take what I can get. All right. Uh, Thank you for that opportunity. Sure. Um, so we're done with County Attorney and on to Sue Dwyer. Is that where we are? Where we are. Thank you. Uh, the county clerk. Um, I'll be uh, giving you an end of the year report, but I just wanted to say a couple of the highlights. Um, we collected over six million dollars in fees. We made about forty five thousand dollars on online subscription and copy fees. I know Tom's going to go what because I. I'll talk to you about that later. <laughs> um, our DMV revenue, while it wasn't 600000 like we were budgeted for, which was a little high, we made uh, $560,536, which isn't bad considering if we had more cars to buy, which there was a shortage of because of chips, we would have made more money. So really, we're kind of on track. Um, we collected a million three hundred sixty-six thousand for mortgage tax, so the county treasurer could disperse that to the towns. And we collected a lot of mortgage tax, so we dispersed that. So Centro, I know that we give we give to Centro in another way, but our office sent six hundred seventy-two thousand nine hundred twenty-one dollars to Centro um, this year. So they get a percentage of mortgage tax every month. We send them a check in addition to whatever the other part of the county does. It's state required. State required. Yep. 
Um, we are scanning civil uh, index books in our office where we've scanned a bunch of deep books, which we scan them, it saves a lot of money. Um, we've been doing that, our passport processing, that's, that's doing really well. And we have some um, staff, most of them are bargaining and we have two people now that have been working for us and doing great with training, but they're provisional because they haven't taken a test because when we put out to people, when we look at the list and we ask the people if they want to come and work for us, they don't. So we have two people that we are training and spending a lot of time on doing well. They're going to have to take a test. And, uh, you know, that's the way things are going now. So I don't know what we're going to do about it. I bring this up a lot, but it is a problem. Um, the, Dreams Project, the Dreams Project is going well. And I always say it's an enormous project. I just want to bring one fact uh, to mind. We will be having just single papers. That doesn't include all of the books and all of the other things, maps and everything. 16.6 .6 million pages scanned. That's how big this project is. That's one part of the project. It's huge. So we've been working a lot on that. Uh, right now, the pilot is still going on and things are going well. They did a lot of prep for it. So that's why things are going well. Um, so um, does anybody have any questions other than that? Uh, the first one I saw was Trish. Um, thank you for your report. So I just wanted to ask about the mortgage recording tax and the percentage that goes to central. Yeah. Um, and also the percent, like percent increase from like one year to the next. You mentioned that, that we collected 1.3 million or so this year. So it's not the percentage stays the same. It's right, right. that we have to follow. It's, it's pretty complicated, but we send out, we don't send out checks anymore, but we transfer funds um, to, I think it's seven checks every month. So it gets dispersed, not just mortgage tax, things that are recorded court papers, a percentage of that goes to record retention um, to, to make sure that every county gets a chance to um, put money towards the maintenance of paper and their records and things like that. Um, that also goes just an opportunity for grants for schools and uh, towns and villages and cities and everybody gets a chance at those. And that's where the money comes from, actually our office. And then, um, I guess my question is more of like, have we, did we see a revenue increase from, from last yeah, we year? Did, on that mortgage if you think about mortgage tax and you think about what real estate did yeah. last year, still going on, not as strong as last year, but still going on pretty strong. Um, yeah, and they absolutely, they got a lot of money. I would love to see that, how that's changed over the last couple of years. Oh, sure. Putting, how many years? Maybe maybe pre COVID to now, uh, like twenty maybe what like 20, 2019 to now. Just sure. to see what our mortgage taxes. Yeah, it would be very interesting. It really would be. Yeah, it would be. Uh, yeah. I know it's like a nineteen, and so you get like sort of the impact of COVID. Yeah. So if you do exactly. maybe yeah. a year or two. Or yeah. Sure, that's good. And then the, yeah. the second question about central. Uh, does, that comes right out the mortgage recording tax? And it they, comes right from mortgage tax. Mortgage tax. So when someone records a mortgage, that's part of the mortgage tax. And there is a set fee for that, set percentage. It must be a large um, percentage. New York State. So, yeah, we don't have a choice of doing that or not. And what it is, it's set by the state. Okay. Yeah. Um. Of course, I don't think Centro's uh, contract is in every, that's Central New York Transportation Authority. Um, other counties and regions around the state have different things. And obviously in downstate, they're gonna have things about trains right. or whatever, but ours is Central. 
So um, that's probably six or seven counties maybe involved in that. I'm not sure how many counties are, but it, there is a breakdown. The state has a sheet on who, who pays what to whom. So um, that could be included too, if you want, just to let you know where the money goes. I, I think it would be an interesting yeah. But, um, We've been talking about the transportation and the micron housing committee that I'm Elaine and I are part of. And um, well, Central, Central has very, very limited routes. Um, it's really not serving the needs of our county. Um, and we put a lot of money into that. I mean, there's another payment that the county makes, right? Doesn't the county? I believe there is another. Yeah. Pretty sure, right? So, yes. And I'm not sure if that increases or if that stays steady, but ours doesn't. It goes up. There's more mortgage tax. So maybe this year was a little lower than last year, but last year it must have been huge. So I saw Heidi next, but is it in regards to yeah, this? Yes, I was just going to recommend if you on your committee or in this committee, um, to have our representative from the central board and report out. We've never actually had that person do that. So I think it's the same person that I'm thinking of. They have a new plan or something now, right? Didn't they just? So it would be interesting to know if we can invite them to just give us an update or go to your committee or to build your work, working committee or whatever. Right. Chris, would you want that the person to come to here or planning or what committee would you? All right. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Would you like a central well, person to come here? Well, explain what you're asking to have someone on. Yeah, we have a we have a representative. Okay. Right, but you're asking someone to come to. Yeah, if they can come and let us know, maybe. We could certainly yeah. extend the invitation, right? I mean, yeah. I think that's a good idea. It gets done. All right, so. For the purpose, or let them is that what you're asking for? Or? I think, yeah, that's what your intention is. Is you're asking for the purpose of what, Sue? No, I'm, I'm wondering what the purpose of having them come here to, to present their plan and um, what, what where our money goes, yeah, where how our funds are actually utilized okay. within the overall context of their budget, I guess. Well, and if Onondaga County is also in the central, which I think they are, yeah. um, you know, they would have the same questions. Yeah, so more than one county asking somebody, and then you know we're going to really pay attention. So as far as the invitation, the clerk of the legislature, because is that? Yeah, I think I mean, we could ask Sheila. Yeah. To call, but I guess you know I, what really hooked me to this request is that you're you know your your feeling is that we're not being served properly by Central. So I think it's important to have that liaison come and hear that or. Understand. And on the flip side, to actually be at the table as we're having these discussions of how can we, you know, build out our public transportation system to get workers to work. Mr. And Chair, if you want me to, I'll get a hold of Sheila tomorrow and Amanda. I appreciate that, sir. If, if this committee would like, I'll invite somebody from Central. It's, it's up to. Yeah. I think it was a great idea, honestly. So I haven't forgotten about Heidi, Lydia, but. Uh, Fred, do you have something? Just to jump in on the topic, did you want the presentation by Central with the full legislature or just at this committee? I think it would benefit the legislature, but I, it's, it's your request. Would you guys, do you guys? I, I only requested it because of what I'm hearing from Trish. And so, so it sounds like it can benefit you from a lot of ways, not only just this committee and how we're funding them, yeah. a larger plan, but your specific needs with the working groups. So. so what do you think? Would you prefer? I would. I would suggest either the full legislature or the or the planning committee, okay. one or the other. Uh, I'd like it for the full ledge. I think it can't hurt to have everyone get the information. Yeah. I'm sure everybody would be interested. Right. Well, uh, we'll be this month because we already have. Oh, they're going to need some patience. So, yeah, I'll try to talk to Sheila and put it on for February. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's okay with everybody. Heidi, you had a question. Yeah, I just wondered um, where we are actually at percentage wise with the digitizing in the dreams project we're only on the pilot which is the beginning of it. so we will have i think there's 200 and something boxes in the pilot they're done with 80 so what they do is um 
We give them a variety of, the first shipment was a variety of different kinds of types of documents. And they go through and they go, oops, found a problem. We got some blah, blah, blah. So we go, okay, this is how you handle that. So that's what they're doing. And then they have a percentage of those that are marked that says Q on them. And those are the ones that are gonna come back to us so we can go through them and say, looks like a good job, take them to shredding. Of course, that doesn't account for anything that we have to save because of historical value. So these are just basically matrimonial <laughs> papers. We've got some maps, we've got, so a big variety, a poo-poo platter. That's what we gave them. So um, that's what they're looking for. So when they go forward and we ship out all of these boxes, they're gonna say, oh, these are civil index books. Boom, you know, and it just goes smooth, you know, so. And when you say them, um, can you describe, is this, a, is this an agency? Yeah, so the scanning is done by eBiz Docs. Fred knows every bit of this. And <laughs> then, it, then it goes to, not physically goes to, but will be sent to Laserfiche. And that's the people who put them up there in the cloud, easiest way to describe it. And um, then it will be available. But in the meantime, there's quality control and things like that. So it's a, it's a lot, but it's going well. We have good people working on it. Um, yeah, so it's uh, a lot. <laughs> also, Lydia? So I had two questions. One was, what is Centro doing with our taxpayer money and how are they spending it? So I hear that now I should just be patient and we'll find out. Um, the second one was about your provisional employees, right? So yeah. it sounds to me like you have a problem and I apologize for not knowing what that problem is, but I'm going to ask you, I, I don't know if everybody in this room other than me understands what the problem is, right. but you talked about provisional employees um, having to take a test and you didn't appear happy at all when you were presenting that part right. of it. So is it okay for me to ask you more sure. information? Yeah, oh yeah. So before, uh, it was very competitive. People took a test and the test got corrected in a timely manner. And then we got the list. And then we had to pick from, um, to give the, there had to be at least people that we would choose from, three top um, scores. And then we would pick from those to decide who we're gonna interview. Then we would choose a person. And once we got them, other than their probationary period, then they were an employee. Now we get the list back. First of all, the test, a lot of tests weren't given for a long time. So then the, the lists were old. And then when the list came up, people are refusing to, you know, they get a letter, they get canvassed in the mail, they get a letter and they send it back. No, I'm not interested. Or they don't send it back at all. They don't send any response, even though they can just email. So the latest is the index and recording clerk position, two people sent back the no, and a lot of people were canvassed. So now we have to go out. So now we give permission for civil service to post the um, a position and people apply for it, just like they're applying for a job. It's a vacancy. So some people are getting alerts all the time from civil service saying, oh, there's a posting and there's a vacancy. So if they qualify, we get their names first, you know, when they say, yes, I want the job, um, civil service says, okay, they meet all the criteria. So these people have not taken a test. So we're training them and it takes, you know, a long time to train somebody in our office, but in the end, they're gonna have to take a test. And if they don't fall within a certain amount of the top, they won't be able to work at our office. So they're able to perform the job satisfactorily for a while but because i have to give them probationary reports just like they are not provisional and they are good employees and now and anybody in the anybody any department head if you ask them what's going on this is what's going on with all of them for the most part it is and it's you know so if this person stays for a year and gets out of probation 
and there's still no test or they take a test. They don't, I mean, I don't know, we start all over again. So I'm just saying if somebody stays for six months or eight months or a year, can't we use them if they are working out? I mean, what a way to so, go ahead. So Sue is running up against the frustrations of working in the world of civil service. Uh, the civil service rules and regs are part of the New York State Constitution. And Sue has kind of given you an overview of what the system is like and some of the frustrations. And is there a way to change it? The short answer is no, not without changing the Constitution, uh, which happens very rarely. And, and that just addresses some of your questions, but it is a very frustrating process. Sue is partly talking about with provisional that there is no list. There is no test scheduled. So you hire somebody as you would hire anybody else. They have to meet certain qualifications. They wait for the test to be given. They have to take the test, score within the top three, and start all over again. So it's a very can be a very frustrating process. And that doesn't address the fact that there are fewer and fewer people applying for the jobs that are out there. We're, we'll be lucky if anybody, I mean, I'm surprised people actually do it, really. I mean, they don't have any security, but they're really interested in the job. They're doing a fantastic job. Can't even tell you, they're real quick and it's not easy work. It's not easy. But are you also? I am at this point, thank you. <laughs> it's very ominous. Uh, and, and then on top of that, we want to charge them for a test. <laughs> Is that correct? I, I guess. Yes. They could have just saying apply for a waiver or something, but well, we get if if you look at any national reports on employment and anything, there are more jobs than there are people to fill them. And and so if you had a choice about paying the test or just filling out an application and getting an interview, what, what are you gonna do? Mm. There's plenty of jobs out it's, there. It, it's not where I think the the system that's present now is really not working well. And we have to think of a different way, whether people take aptitude tests or whatever they do. I mean, I'm just talking, you know, but I, I'm just saying, why don't we have people take aptitude tests and figure out where their strong points are? It's just not, people are not taking the tests or finding the value in working for a municipality either. That's another thing we have to, you know, um, Valued, <clears throat> think that they're going to be valued. Bob? Thank you. Um, who, who makes up the test as far as it seems, it seems silly to have. I can, I mean, yeah, might as well have you do it. <laughs> the state makes up the test. They have a uh, different groups depending on what the category is that develops the questions. Sometimes they just update an old test. Uh, but what appears to be happening with COVID, the length of time to generate the tests, to give the tests has all been basically stopped, started again, and it's taking months to get the test corrected. And Denise has talked about this, the sheriff has talked about this. That's in addition to the number of applicants for the test being down as well. I those are scan We're going to go down a big rabbit hole if you keep going. Yeah, there's, those are scantrons. Anyways, any further questions for yeah, just one comment? The one thing, the trouble is that tests are only given once a year. That is the problem. And this has been a problem since I was sheriff in 2004. You don't get them back for six months, which is absolutely ridiculous. They're all computerized and they give a test once a year. So, what really all the municipalities, their hands are tight and there's not a thing we can do. The civil service laws, 150 years old, I'm, I'm speaking literally, and it's never been changed, and I don't know if it ever will. It's the most stupidest law that we've ever had. <laughs> Trish, that um, well, that's how you're Dave, I, I, I agree with you 100% on that. Um, I've taken plenty of civil service tests in my lifetime. The tests really often have nothing to do with the job mm -hmm. and the duties that you have to perform. Uh, but I did want to say NISAC is... This is part of their 2023 legislative platform. Yeah. Uh, so um, maybe we can do stuff, have, you know, do a resolution here or something yeah. to join the chorus of other municipalities across the state that Absolutely. feel the same way. All the county clerks feel the same way. 
Um, and I will say that, you know, one of the things that's important, I mean, when people start here a long time ago, they really appreciated the, um, the health services and everything else and benefits. And, you know, when people come here, they have to work a whole year to get any vacation. I think that that's not, nice. didn't we just change? The that's contract? changed with uh, new contracts with, oh. I mean, one that's signed. <laughs> There's only one that's signed. I so mean, that's that, has been, uh, that has been really scary for people to interview people that are coming from even Nova that would get a week or two when they started. And they're saying, I get what? It's, and my it's wife been, and I, we got four holidays. <laughs> they, they do get Jim Thillian holidays. <laughs> I feel like Alice, did, did you was there? Uh, no, I'm I, I'm good. I'm I'm uh, with with Trish on this as far as I'm not in the committee, but you know maybe a resolution to support that uh, the civil service process is is antiquated. Uh, I'm sure there was a reason for it at the beginning to make it fair and equitable and for everybody uh, but it just I've, i will say that you know it's really important in my office to have accuracy and to have a good understanding of what somebody is reading uh they're they're actually a good way to rate somebody on those things so it has worked for that but not a, not my other department and not a lot of other departments in the county but and we always say like what do the other states do? What are the other counties doing? You know, that's where the learning, I think, is comes into play. The, the other thing. Go ahead. In the high schools, when they're preparing kids for ACT, ACT exams, which are kind of falling by the wayside anyway, but they would give them examples of the tests so that they could practice. I don't know if that's legal. They do or have not, practice on civil service stuff. So <laughs> if we have to kind of work around and, and yeah. kind of skirt and work loopholes, maybe it can get some minds together and think creatively to solve those problems. Yeah. I'd like to add. Hey, hey, you guys just talk amongst yourselves or no, I'm good. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally teasing. Any further questions? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think so. Yep. I just wanted to add that's a really good point. Um, for my other job, I, I see that that it is an under uh represented, or I don't know what the words I'm looking for. They need to put more service out here, Centro does in terms of Centro. So that's a great point. Um so now we're on to Tom. Yes. So that's <clears throat> Good evening. So you have my report. Um, I just had one addition I wanted to make and kind of bring it to your attention. And that uh, involves the uh, potential acquisition of some monitoring software for our employees that are going to be participating in uh, remote work policy. So um, <clears throat> since deploying that policy back in uh, December, I've had several discussions with some department heads who kind of brought some concerns or, or really questions around, you know, um, what it looks like to, uh, as far as the IT support and what tools or, or reporting can we provide them in terms of, you know, kind of monitoring the employees as they're working from home. And, you know, my answer to that was, you know, we do have several tools uh, available to us either through our firewall or, um, you know, through our, uh, our web filter where we could provide and kind of collate a report for someone, but that's kind of a one-time thing. And that takes, uh, quite a substantial effort from IT. So I, I kind of took that information and I met with uh, Lynn, Shireen, uh, and Diane Ferris uh, a couple of weeks back and kind of uh, presented this to them. And I think we're all under the kind of the same same guys that we needed to at least research um, some sort of an application that could be made available for this purpose. So I went ahead and, and researched various solutions and kind of one product that did stand out uh, from a cost and uh, functionality perspective, and that's called InterGuard. So what it does is it provides one single dashboard um, <clears throat> to, a, to a department head or to, or to IT uh, or to various other uh, leadership that uh, shows, you know, kind of user productivity trends, time tracking, and also, and it identifies any potential cyber security risks that are going on on that device potentially um, while the user is working from home. So um, real-time monitoring and data uh, capture can be performed by either a department head, like I said, uh, myself, the CIO, or any other leadership uh, kind of on demand. 
So <clears throat> I did want to run the cost by you as well. It's uh, one hundred twenty dollars a month per user, um, and that's for a twenty five user licenses. And as we increase that license count, the cost would drop uh, pretty dramatically. Holy crap. Um, it, it is quite expensive. Uh, with that being said, that was off the record. <laughs> that, uh, that cost, well, one savings we have seen was uh, the migration that I did perform from Verizon to FirstNet for all of our cellular services. Those costs are currently being pulled out of the individual departments, and that would kind of offset the cost of, uh, of this, this tool. So, um, that's where we're kind of seeing the, the offset. Can I ask a quick, quick question? Is that essentially mm -hmm. monitoring keyboard strokes? It, it can do that, but that's not the real value. Um, where it does bring more value in is it kind of shows the web traffic, what they're doing during those hours instead of you know just clicking a mouse button. It, it can do that. It also does take screenshots every 15 minutes or so and kind of captures them. And then it has AI built in to kind of tell you, identifies that screenshot and tells you what Kind of what's going on. So it, pro it actually provides reports, productivity versus non-productivity reports for a department head. For that cheap, huh? That's interesting. That's the cost, yeah. So and, and how many cheap. licenses were you looking at? 25. 25 to start. Um, that's I worked with Diane to get an initial count of users. Um, we anticipate that up as far as um, the remote policies increase. Uh, but that's where we're at. Right now. Know. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Bring back the trash. Um, <laughs> I'm just curious if this has been discussed within whole department head meeting and where you mentioned a couple of department heads were asking for this. Mm -hmm. Are all department heads asking for this? Um, and I'm also curious um, if uh, how other counties are managing remote work mm -hmm. and um, I'm, I'll leave it there for now. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, so the We're first not. question I've had approximately, I'd say five to seven department heads approach me <laughs> and kind of ask this similar question. And probably the third or fourth one, I said, okay, you know, this is going to be a couple of recurring things. Okay. So that's when I started the discussion. Then it was the idea that I would bring it to this committee to kind of get your, you know, opinions, questions, concerns. And if we had the support, we were going to bring it forward to the department head meeting and kind of talk about it there. Ailey, did you have one? Yeah, I was curious, um, and maybe the chair knows, since we've moved to the remote policy, are we are we talking or looking at any sort of additional training for our department heads in order to deal with this? When we had to suddenly go remote, um, it was very, very, very difficult for supervisors. Um, it, it's just a totally different style of leadership. And there's a sense, there's a letting go, there's a trust issue, you know, that you have to, you know, and it's, I'm afraid that the software is a real gotcha. Uh, and I, I'm a little nervous about it. Um, so I don't know if there's something we should look into. I haven't looked at the NYSEC agenda yet. I don't, they must be talking about this. I um, imagine. Yeah, I, did, I have to go back and look, but I'm interested to know what other counties are doing. Um, just, I mean, just from the remote policy, how to deal with that, and then perhaps implementing software like this and how that might go over. I, I did query our, our fellow directors of technology throughout the counties to kind of see what they were doing. I got, you know, I think five responses back, but they're doing something very similar to what we were proposing, um, you know, and then our, I guess our guys or our communication to department heads, you know, is going to be, you know, we don't, we don't want to be big brother, but we want to kind of utilize this tool in two ways, right? It's not just to say, you know, we're going to micromanage these employees from home, but also give the opportunity for an employee to say, hey, no, look at the report and kind of look at what I'm doing and accomplishing and, and maybe that can be used as more of a, you know, a tool to, um, you know, I guess, optimize time management within the department. So you're not overtaxing one individual versus another. So <clears throat> yeah, it's just, it just requires a whole new level of mm -hmm. leadership and, and um, supervision and all the tactics and styles that go along with that being manager. All right. Was he? He raised his hand. 
but they were first. Well, but yeah, I know it was definitely waiting. We definitely let the chairman go first. All right. <laughs> as far as your question, as far as the training for the uh, remote, we we got before we put this uh, whole policy together, we talked to all the department heads, got all their opinions, talked during our department head meetings for the last three or four months. So there was a lot of input from everybody regarding the remote policy. So it wasn't just put it together and nobody had any input in it. Everyone, as far as department heads, did. So it took a lot of work, and I think they did a great job on it. I think it's a good thing. We will never be able to hire a lot of people if they don't work from remotely now, if they don't have that opportunity. It's just the way the world is. We all know that now. But there was a lot of work Ailey put in. Oh, yeah. I, I don't want to. Go ahead. I'm not suggesting that. I just, no, no. I guess I'm thinking now that it's started, mm -hmm. there must be some peer to peer work that could be going on or some checking in to see how they're dealing with it. You know, um, as, there, there is. as managers, you know what I'm saying? Diane and, and Diane and Trina have been working intensely with that. Yeah. Getting still feedback. Yeah. We're still modifying the, the forms and stuff. I think it's working well. I think the department heads think it's working well. Mm -hmm. But that's a good question. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. So my HR hat went on immediately. Um, as you could probably imagine. And when you said that you brought Diane Ferris into it, I was like, okay, good. Um, one of my concerns would be, is Intergard familiar with New York state laws and regulations? Mm -hmm. Because privacy is a huge concern. And on that side, uh, New York state is in favor of the employee, not the employer. So we, when we're doing something like this, monitoring closely, we're really opening ourselves to risk. Um, so that was one of the first things I thought. The other thing I thought was, so can we start letting department heads go since this software is doing their jobs, right? And I don't mean that to be snarky, but I do know that <coughs> for reasons what Aileen was saying, they don't have the training possibly <coughs> they need to transition from an in-house face-to-face manager to a remote manager because they are very different things mm -hmm. um, with the letting go and you know not micromanaging um, the trust issues, um, but also not everybody is data oriented. And how do you monitor productivity if you're not data oriented? So I, I think that throwing money at the problem. Are you timing me? Throw, <laughs> yeah. Throwing money at the problem is not necessarily the best first step because I might not have voted to support that going remote if I would have known it would have cost us all this extra money. So, all right. Thank so, you. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, I got deferring to the chair because Jim was next, but yeah, that's all right. Just a real quick, and maybe it's a yeah, friend who want to cut the chair off. But is is this new program? Is that foil? <laughs> can people foil? Information? I'd have to see what data they're accessing because that makes one it, big difference to me. Some of it probably is not, depending okay. on how how what the level of data access is. Okay, so I don't know the answer to that. All right, right here. thank you. Thanks. Private sector does it all the time. That's all I got to say. They monitor their, it, in your, to Lydia's point, some people aren't that oriented with what they're doing or assignments, but the private sector, if you're working remote, there's, there's monitoring. Most of the time, the people that work remote are people that have to do computer work. And it's monitored all the time. Sometimes that's how they get paid. If they're working remote, they don't have to be there eight, on the computer eight to 4.30. They just have to put in a certain number of hours and it's and that's it's monitored by the time they're, that they're on their computer, and it checks it every fifteen minutes. I have um, a niece that that works remote, and I asked her about it. They, said they check her computer every fifteen minutes. There's some system she didn't know what it was, but um, it was interesting information. And that's she saves on gas. She saves on how she clothes she has to buy. She, you know, she, she's a hundred percent remote now. So. Yes, sir. Um, just, I know he said, you know, the cost was $125 per user, which is, you know, per month. Very minimal per month. Per month. Per, 
a month. A month. Each, but again, that's minimal. But now I'm I'm questioning, or my mind is thinking. It, it, obviously, this the county would have to buy this person a computer because we wouldn't expect them to go out and provide their own computer. Mm -hmm. And then, if is that computer compatible to? If they're only working a couple of days remote and then back here, is that computer capable of coming being transported from point A to point B? Absolutely. And you know, that's what I'm saying. And so there's a cost also. And and we all know computers, <laughs> they're good. You buy it today, six months from now, it's bottom of the line and you gotta upgrade. And there's there's the cost that you know I got my mind working on. Cost. Uh, just specifically to the endpoints for for users, we're, we are transitioning as a county to all portable devices for all of our employees. So, the minute you know someone you know signs off on a remote work policy, or if they do have a desktop, off chance they do, we will you know upgrade them to a laptop. We will take and repurpose that device, so the county isn't really you know losing anything from a financial standpoint as far as that goes, um, as far as the endpoint goes. And yes, that that software. Um, once it's attached or installed on that device, it will it will travel with the employee. Um, and there's there's certain schedules you can set so that if you know when the employee is working remotely, that's when it will monitor the device. It won't monitor it while it's on site. Uh, sorry, you first go ahead. <laughs> this is a great discussion uh, and a lot of interesting points to consider for sure. Um, I appreciate you bringing it forward. I definitely have share some of the concerns that have been raised. I, I personally think $120 a month per user is high. Mm -hmm. um, and I would I would be interested in seeing what other options there are out there for software, not just to monitor and monitor productivity and make sure people are doing their jobs, uh, I guess, um, but also, you know, when, when you have a split workforce like that, how are managers maintaining that team team cohesion mm -hmm. um, with employees being scattered around? Um, maybe there's software out there that can help with that, or maybe there's training out there that can help with that. And I do think that training piece is something that we should consider. I mean, we've definitely changed the work mod, workforce model for this county, and um, it has different requires different skill sets. That um, we should be looking at, at offering those training opportunities. One thing I might just to kind of put a plant a seed is perhaps, and I've worked with three different private sector organizations who don't monitor totally. So not meaning to contradict you, but what they have done was if they find an employee is maybe not producing like they should, then they'll initiate a monitor. Um, but in that case, everybody's making sure that risks mitigated, that you know we're, we're being cautious to not step over that privacy line. Um, and rather than paying 25 times 120 times 12, we're only paying as needed. So I don't know if that's helpful. Yes, I mean, I, I actually brought that forward. Um, to, I figured you would. Yeah, yeah, to the human resource. So I mean, we're having all these types of conversations. That's why I wanted to bring it to this group. This is great feedback for me that I can then bring back with, with uh, Diane Schrader and Lynn. So I just thank you for this. Real quick, Tom, I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Was that uh, $120 for one license? Yes. Per month? Yes. And Tommy, those 25 licenses, right? That was the initial thought to get 25 with the assumption that that would increase. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess I just, oh, sorry, go I didn't, did you have your hand up? Quickly, I, I want to say that, you know, I too have worked remotely now for four or five years, have never been monitored, work for the state it's academic position. Um, what they look at is my productivity. You know, you know, I had need a, a piece of software to know, did I, did I, you know, did, was I active with my students? How many of them were retained in the course? How many of the past, et cetera? And then, you know, what my evaluations look like. That's what a manager should know and do. So it just goes back to training for me. 
how can they figure out some, how can we figure out an internal process for our supervisors to be able to say, this is what should be produced in a typical day or a typical period of remote work um, before we look at like a, a, a sort of a robot system to do it for them. Trish? I guess my final thought on this is that I appreciate you bringing those concerns forward. And I, you know, as legislators, we sit here and make policy and sometimes it doesn't play out the way that we think it's going to in day-to-day -day administration. So I just want to communicate that the feedback from the department heads is very important. Uh, and hearing hearing how this is impacting them is, is important for us to be considering. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm not sure this is exactly um, the right solution. I'm not sure it's not the right solution, but I, I think it's good to have start the conversation. Exactly. The only thing that I will say from the, from the county perspective is this was never meant to be an all-inclusive solution. You know, this was just meant to be another tool we could use to evaluate, right? Or to start a conversation. Um, but that's kind of where this kind of started. So I just wanted to say that I echo a lot of the concerns that were raised tonight. And Specifically, Heidi, I, I, I think similarly, I, a lot of my adult life, I've worked <clears throat> in the field, case management, um, and it was always managed through outcomes. So you had to meet the productivity, the outcomes, whatever. So I, I guess, again, as Trish said, I, I'm not sure that we don't need to or shouldn't do it, but it, it, it's concerning to me, to say the least. It's like, what is it, Benjamin Franklin? You sacrifice liberty for security. You should have it. You'll have neither. So, anyways, that's my two cents. Close enough. Is that? Close enough. Well, it wasn't Benjamin Franklin. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. More shoes and hand grenades on the floor of the legislature. Yes. So, just one more quickly for clarity, Tom. Your next steps are to take our collective feedback back to the department heads. Yes and then weigh and measure how they're feeling with what we expressed. Yeah, exactly. So we'll hear from you again. You will. Okay. The next meeting. I, I got one last question for Tom. Were you here for the first meeting? The first, the, the previous meeting, the- uh, oh. Totally, yes, I was downstairs. Borg. So he heard from the plant, from the uh, probation or whatever, that they need to talk to him. Okay. Oh, judicial and public safety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, anything else, Tom? No, I'm all set. Unless you have any, any other questions on my any other questions by anybody? Concerns? Thanks, Tom. All right, thank you. I think Thanks, that's be a heaven swap. Oh, thank you, uh, Mr. Swap. Good evening. Um, I just sent up a report. Got caught at the end of the year, um, but uh, we finished out the year in a pretty good place. We've now filled our department after rolling over every position in the past year. And so uh, we're rolling into 2023. And uh, one of the big things we have going is the Dwyer funds. I've got a meeting on how to, to use that those funds to connect with and help veterans in Q County in 2023. I'll be talking to the Veteran Advisory Board next week about some uh, initiatives. Uh, from your, your perspective, what we're looking for is if you have any veterans who have issues, complaints, whatever, please point them in our direction. We are, are ready to help them out. Sometimes the answer isn't one they like, but uh, we, will, we will work to see what we can do for them. Um, we're looking for some events in 2023. You'll be seeing more on that in the future, but I'll keep it brief. And as things develop, I'll uh, keep you updated. Thank you, Kevin. Any questions? Congratulations on getting the office filled. <laughs> yes. Well, we, we, we actually, we're going to need a driver. One of our drivers is going back to Florida, but I've got a, a, a stop gap measure for that in the near term. I think Lydia just volunteered for that. She had her hand up. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. If you, if you like waking up at like five o'clock in the morning and driving around <laughs> the county, that'd be awesome. I already do that. Um, <laughs> thank you for all that you're doing for the vets in our community. Um, one thing you, you talked about events. Um, we 
have certain events in each town, for example, and I'm thinking about Canal Days from Fort Byron, where it would have been great to have a representative from the Veterans Office to be there, because I did field a lot of questions uh, specific to vets, and you were kind enough to send me with some literature. Um, so if uh, if I do have some things that I'm hearing about coming up, I'll reach out to you. And if it works, absolutely, we, we want to. Put- we want to put those on our calendars as far out as possible so we can plan. And with the Dwyer funding, we're hiring some additional uh, veteran service officers to handle specifically those kind of events. Excellent. So like the weekend events and, and that sort of thing, we definitely want, but we want to put them on our calendar, obviously, so we can plan as far out as possible. Thank you. Any further questions for Mrs. Swab? Hearing none. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Ken. Any- I do have one comment before we get done, before you close. And I, I'm not on the committee. You all know that. And I would never tell the committee head what, what to do. That's up to them. But can I make a suggestion that we put on the next agenda for your committee to discuss the form of government? Get this. Well, I think, Mr. Chair, what I'd like to do is reach out to Aileen and, yeah, and, and see what maybe the other side of the aisle is looking for in terms of, you know, it's just so, as I, as I said, I wanna proceed in a way that's gonna enable us to work together towards form something that's, that's fine. gonna work. So um, certainly yes is the answer. I would agree with that, but I, I'd like to, so what I'm hearing from Aileen is, <coughs> oh, I was gonna use this something or get off the pot analogy, but. Um, that's okay. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> so that's what I, I think I'll have a discussion with them and um, then we can bring forward what they're, they're thinking and then, you know, the compromise and we'll move forward that way. Sounds right. good. Can I make another suggestion then? Aileen and I are going to sit down very quickly and, and decide what the leadership team is, how we're going to compile that. That would probably be, and Aileen, do you agree? Mike's not here, but do you agree that we could sit down with Chris with four legislators over what we decide to do and present it, start talking about it there. That way they can take it back to the caucus. Yes. Yeah, let's talk about that for sure. I mean, I'm just, Same. everybody knows I'm the type that's not gonna sit here because we're done. A lot of us are done at the end of this year. Agreed. And I'd love to have some form of government by the election by November. Maybe the new well, ledge will change it. have a rough run of, you know, so. Right. It, um, the message was received, and I think we can have that conversation Good. and Good. see what sort of body, I guess, or committee or whatever, um, you know, is going to be agreeable to both sides and has the best chance of success. And maybe Chris and Fred or Chris or Fred can come to that meeting and start telling us exactly what the form of governments are, our different options. I know we've discussed it a little bit last year but we didn't do much in depth. So I, I really, we need to depend on Chris and Fred to, to fill us in on in all the options. I, <laughs> I'm just responding to your comments. A, um, you know, we, we can rely on them, but we, we also are responsible. Right. We have to pick up the ball and run. We have to make these decisions. Agreed, absolutely. Um, we just need the knowledge to, to have make the support, that the knowledge. That we gotta put pen to paper. It's on us. Yep. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and thank you, Aileen, for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Checks in the mail. 2023. <laughs> Checks in the mail. Um, any further discussion before the committee? Hearing none, motion to adjourn. I will wait. Thank you. Sounds good. Great meeting. Good night, everybody. Great meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yes, oh, yeah.